Hello, God bless you. Welcome to our daily video where we're going to take a daily look at the Bible verse. You know we all get hungry and need to eat and feed our physical bodies, but just as importantly, we need to be feeding our spiritual bodies. We feed our spiritual body by getting along with God, praying, and reading the Bible. You can read a physical copy of the Bible, but if you cannot see to read the Bible, or you do not own a physical book, then you can read the Bible from a free Bible app on your device, from one of the various free Bible websites, or download a free Bible program on on your computer but it is so very important to read the Bible for yourself to feed your spiritual body this spiritual food will strengthen you and help you to face any and every trial tribulation temptation and struggle in these daily videos we give you a verse of the day or an appetizer as I like to call it along with some discussion which I pray will lead you to want to dust off your Bible and read the Bible for yourself read the verses before and after just finish the chapter and feast on this living word like I always say read the Bible for for yourself. Don't take my word or anybody else's. Read the Bible for yourself so you will not be deceived. I am just a person like you are. I am in no way special. I do not have all the answers. No one does. I don't care who they say they are. Pastor, a teacher, evangelist, prophet, seer. It does not matter. They do not have the answers that you're looking for. Only God does. And you will only receive your answers through prayer and by reading the Bible. And with all the misinformation and deception in this end time world this bible is the only truth that we have so once someone else tell you what the truth is read the bible for yourself do not rely on someone through tv radio internet or physical church to tell you what is in the bible no one can even scratch the surface of what is in the bible hollywood cannot even match the stories in this book so read and discover the stories for yourself today we're looking at a scripture that is so relevant to the world we're seeing today because as we wait for the lord to return we're trying to get people eyes open to the reality that Jesus is coming soon. We have people that will listen. We have people that won't because they're in love with the world. This verse just goes right along with this from James 4.4. 4. Ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God? Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is an enemy of God. Adultery is a description of spiritual unfaithfulness. It would have been especially familiar to James's Jewish readers since the Old Testament often describes unfaithful Israel as a spiritual harlot. James is writing to professing Christians outwardly associated with the church but holding a deep affection for the evil world. James is not saying that they were adulterers, but he was showing them that they were not faithful to God. The Old Testament speaks about God as being Israel's husband and Israel being his wife. Sometimes the Jews turn from God to serve other false little G gods. Then it was like a wife who went away to another husband. And the New Testament says that the church is the bride of Christ. James is saying that they were not faithful to Christ. They did not love God as they should. And said they loved the things of this world. Those who share in the value of the, of the world are not faithful to God. The things of the world include all that opposes God and his rules. James is talking about those worldly pleasures that draw people away from God. It is the desire for wealth, power, and pleasure that rules those of the world. They refuse the rule of God. Friends of the world describe love in a sense of strong emotional attachment. Those with a deep and intimate longing for the things of this world give evidence that they are not redeemed. Enemy of God is the result of friendship with the world. The sobering truth is that unbelievers are God's enemies. It is taught throughout all scripture. And as Israel was a spiritually adulterous, unfaithful to God, so is the church a spiritual adulteress when she is unfaithful to the bride of Christ. One cannot both love God and love the world. Desire for the things of the world is friendship with the world. By its nature, friendship with the world is against God. He who is a friend of the world becomes an enemy of God. 
Christians cannot love God and love the world. They have to choose between God and the world. They cannot be friends with the world and God both. That's the problem we see in today's world. We have people in the world, and even professing Christians themselves, that are too in love with this world, they don't want to leave. That's why they never want to hear about the rapture. They're in love with the world and things of this world. Especially when you have prosperity preachers. Because they're in love with their houses and their cars and their jets and whatever it may be. They don't want to leave this world. Even though if they surrendered to Jesus, the riches that they had in heaven would be way more than they'd ever have here on earth. But they're in love with this world and everything the world has to offer. What people can give them. And that's what a lot of people in the world, they think that things of God are boring. And they want all that the world has to offer. But all the world has to offer, it fades. Something shiny can fade. Money can burn away or be lost or stolen. Cars can rust away. Houses can fall apart. The only true foundation that we should have is our faith in God and know that what he has waiting for us is so much better than we have in the world and if you don't understand that then that's why we share the gospel in the video because you may intellectually know who Jesus is you may know what Jesus is on the cross but you don't know him personally you never taken the time to talk to him to pray to him to read the Bible to get to know him that's why I introduce you to Jesus right now the gospel in a nutshell is that because of the fall, sin entered the world. And sin created a wall that separated all of us from God. Romans 3.23 says that all of sin comes short of the glory of God. And Romans 6.23 says that the wages of sin is death. Which means because of our sin, no one is worthy of going to heaven. But as J John 3.16 says, God loves us so much that God the Son left heaven, became a flesh and blood human, 2 Corinthians 5.21 says Jesus lived a perfect sinless life but Jesus became sin for us to pay our sins meaning that Jesus put on our sins so that we can put on his righteousness and 2 Corinthians 15.1-4 says that Jesus died for our sins was buried and rose again from the dead the third day and Romans 10.9 says if we confess Jesus with our mouth and believe in our heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, then we'll be saved. And John 14, 6 tells us that Jesus is the only way to heaven. And as we see at the end of John 3, 16, and whoever believes in Jesus will have eternal life. But Jesus' blood is the ticket. His blood covered our sins, past, present, and future. His blood broke down that wall that separates us from God. And if you sincerely believe and surrender your life to Jesus, meaning you're not just saying words to please someone or try to get a get out of hell free card, but you really believe in what Jesus did for you on the cross, and you truly want to live for him now, then you'll be saved. This is Jesus' free gift to you, and all you have to do is accept it, because you can't earn it, you can't be a good enough person, you can't do enough good deeds, and when you stand before God, it won't matter how much you've given to charity, or that you never robbed or killed anybody. Our works, our deeds, are not good enough to get us into heaven. We can't earn it, we can't deserve it, but God loves us enough that he made a way. And we always follow the gospel, the warning of Jesus is in return. Because right now you can personally know Jesus, but one day soon and how soon we don't know, but complete hell on earth will come. We can see it coming, the world's getting darker by the minute. The Bible predicts it, and I want you to know Jesus personally before all hell breaks loose. Because right now, before the tribulation starts, we're under the age of grace, meaning that right now is the easy way out. To come to Jesus, all you have to do is sincerely believe in what Jesus did for you on the cross and surrender your life to him. Accept Jesus' free gift, that free ticket into heaven. But after the tribulation begins, the age of grace will be over. And that'll be the hard way. And you have to do more than just believe in Jesus. Now you have to die for Jesus. But I love you and I don't want that for you. So right now, before the age of grace is over, please turn to Jesus today. You know, many have different opinions on the rapture. And we're not here to argue about the timing or the reality of the rapture. None of these theologies really matter. One thing is for sure. We're not guaranteed tomorrow. We're not guaranteed our next breath. And even if we are here to see some of the hell that's coming, who knows how long we'll be able to survive. 
And know this, one day millions will disappear along with all the children all over the world. And when you hear that all these have vanished, know that no matter what is said, because based on what we're seeing, they may use aliens to explain away what happened. But know that if you don't see me or hear my voice, these videos are not uploaded. If all the children around the world are gone, along with millions of others, know that Jesus took us home in the rapture. And I'd like to give you the gospel in more detail. And if you don't know Jesus personally, please take the time to get to know him today while you still have time. Today is a day of salvation. 1 Corinthians 15, 1-4 Jesus died for your sins according to the scriptures. Jesus was buried and rose from the dead on the third day according to the scriptures. Romans 10, 9-13 If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. You believe with your heart unto righteousness. And with your mouth confession is made unto salvation, and all who call on the name of the Lord will be saved. You may have repeated a prayer to accept Jesus as your Savior, perhaps just to please someone, but you didn't really know what it meant, or maybe you were not sincere in your prayer. Your attempt may have been just to get a get-out-of-jail-free card. Perhaps you had entirely dismissed Christianity as boring, ridiculous, or irrelevant. You may not even want to know Jesus because you think that Jesus is all about rules. Now that's religion. Religion is man trying to be good enough to get to God by his own efforts. Jesus breaks the chains of religion and sets you free. Perhaps you shut out Jesus because of the church or someone offended you. We're all human. We all mess up. But don't miss heaven because some broken person offended you to make themselves feel better. Everyone has done wrong things called sin against God. That's Romans 3.23. We all deserve God's punishment. That's Romans 6.23. And we cannot save ourselves from that punishment by our own efforts. We cannot save even ourselves by good works or religion. That's Romans 3.20. So our situation seems hopeless, but God did not leave us in a hopeless state. God sent His Son Jesus to the world. That's John 3.16. Jesus lived a perfect life without any sin. That's Hebrews 4.15. Jesus deserved no punishment. But when Jesus died on that cross, He suffered the punishment for our sins. We see that in Galatians 3.13. Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law being made a curse. And also in Romans 5.8, God showed, proved His love towards us. That while we failed him in our sins, Jesus still died for us. God did not wait till we were lovable without sin before he saved us. God saved us while we were still sinners. In Romans 5.18 says, By the offense of one, judgment came upon all men to condemnation. By the righteous of one, the free gift came upon all men unto justification of life. But we cannot benefit from his death if we do nothing. We must be humble. God will forgive us. If we confess our evil deeds, sin to him, that's Acts 3.19. We must invite him into our lives, and we must simply trust him. Then God will change our lives. We say that in 2 Corinthians 5.17. If we are in Christ, we are a new creature. Old things are passed away. All things have become new. Jesus' suffering on the cross is a picture that may be difficult for you to understand. But he was betrayed by a friend. He was arrested and falsely accused and sentenced to death. He was beaten and whipped. A crown of thorns was pressed on his head. In bearing the cross, he stumbled and staggered. Each step of the journey got worse. He was spit on, mocked, but Jesus never looked back. He kept on going. You know, Jesus could have summoned a legion of angels to save him. He could have called for a fire to come down from heaven. He could have avoided that cross, but Jesus was not interested in saving himself. He was only interested in saving you. Every detail of this torturous path to the cross was part of God's plan to bring you to him. We are all broken, we all mess up, and we have all made wrong choices. No one has to teach a baby to be angry or selfish. We are all born with it. But the blood of Jesus shed on the cross blotted out our sin record. Our sins were nailed to the cross with them, and the blood of Jesus washed those sins away. Jesus' blood is our ticket into a relationship with God. The Bible says that if we confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord, and believe in our heart that God raised Him from the dead, then we will be saved. It's not enough to intellectually believe in Jesus with your head. You must believe in Jesus with your heart. It's that simple. God loves you enough that He paid the ticket for you to get into heaven. We're all sinners. None of us can buy our way into heaven. It's a 100% free gift. We can't earn it. We don't deserve it. But God loves us enough that he made a way. So put your faith and trust in Jesus right now. Just call out to Jesus and surrender your life to him. 
because right now there is just one person at the foot of the cross and it is you all you have to do is believe this right now is the easiest time trust me you don't want to wait to come to Jesus right now you just have to accept his free gift but if you wait until you are left behind then in the tribulation you will have to give your life for him but Jesus already gave his life for you but you didn't accept it but right now under grace is the easiest time you just have to believe in what Jesus did on the cross for you that's the gospel message it's that simple here's a simple prayer you can pray if you want to give your life to Jesus it doesn't have to be these exact words just say something like Jesus thank you for shedding your blood for me I'm giving my heart to you today. I do believe that you died for me and that you were raised from the dead for me. Please give me a new heart and a new life right now. And just know that God hears your prayers and he will answer your prayers. And if you are sincere and have truly surrendered to Jesus, that Jesus will protect you and give you strength. Jesus is coming back soon. We can see all the signs that Jesus talked about. War, sicknesses, natural disaster. It's all happening worldwide. And if you doubt that we are in the end times, we have a questionnaire in the description box called Do You Think We're In The End Times? Take the quiz. Feel free to give us your answers in the comments section. I think if you are paying attention to the world around you, you will see that we are truly in the end times. And before you say there's always been war, sicknesses, natural disasters, let me say yes, you are absolutely right there has but now as predicted in the bible it's all happening worldwide and like birth pains these end time events are happening more frequently and more intensely so do not wait do not put jesus off go to god now give your life to jesus today while you still have the opportunity we covered in the gospel that jesus already paid the price it's a free ticket waiting for you to enter into heaven and you have the opportunity today to turn to jesus before it's too late this is your wake-up call jesus is coming back soon Bye. Bible prophecy is jumping off the page. We do not have time to wait. The Bible is clear that we are not guaranteed tomorrow. There is no guarantee that we'll see the sun rise tomorrow. So tomorrow may be one day too late. So please turn to Jesus today. Well, I pray you got something out of the message today. If you did, give God glory. Remember that I love you and Jesus loves you. Hope you have a great day. We'll see you tomorrow, God willing, or hopefully we'll see you in the clouds.